Hey everybody, grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ to you guys. Um, today I'm looking at converted to Islam's supposed 100 proof Jesus is not God, the temptation of Jesus. Let's hear what he has to say. Universal and Islamic greetings, peace be upon you, assalamu alaikum. I'm going to prove to you right now that Jesus is not God because I... Well, first of all, let us expose his lies because he said salam alaikum to everybody. But what did their prophet teach about this? Here I'm at Tafsir Ibn Kathir I'm at Tafsir.com. This is a Muslim website approved by Muslim. This is an Islamic book approved by Islam for 1400 years. And uh, let's see what Muhammad had to say to this. Do not initiate the Salam to the Jews and Christians. Because remember, this is a video for Christians. This is supposed to be teaching Christians, not Muslims, because Muslims don't believe Jesus is God. Do not initiate the Salam to the Jews and Christians. And if you meet any of them in a road, force them to the narrow sally. This is why the leader of the faithful, Umar bin al-Khathab, may Allah be pleased with him, demanded his well-known conditions be met by the Christians. These conditions that ensured their continued humiliation, degradation, and disgrace. Hmm, imagine if a Christian leader rose up and said, Christians, when you see Muslims in the street, spit in their faces and humiliate them. Muslims would go crazy. Like they do over a cartoon on Muhammad. They would go get furious for such a thing. Yet here we see the hypocrisy of Islam. They approve their prophet teaching such a filthy, disgusting teaching. And But you see what he's doing here. He's practicing takia. Here I'm at the same website. And we're at, uh, on um, chapter 3. Ibn Kathir is uh, explaining chapter 3 for us. And remember, chapter 3, verse 7 says that only the scholars can properly understand Islam. And Allah and who? Muhammad. Not us. We go to the scholars and what they say we go by. Allah prohibits believing servants from becoming supporters of the disbelievers or to take them as comrades with whom they develop friendships rather than the believers. Allah warned against such behavior when he said, and whoever does that will never be helped by Allah in any way, meaning whoever commits this act that Allah has permitted it, then Allah will discard him. Similarly, Allah said, O oh, you who believe, take not mine enemies and your enemies as friends, showing affection towards them, until, and whoever of you does that, then indeed he has gone astray from the straight path. Allah said, O oh, you who believe, take not for friends disbelievers instead of believers. Do you wish to offer Allah a manifest proof against yourself? And O oh, you who believe, take not the Jews and Christians as friends, but they are but friends of each other. And whoever befriends them, surely he is one of them. Hey, maybe that's why we're friends of each other, because your God tells us not to be friends. Did you ever think about that? Stupid God? Allah said, after mentioning the, the fact that the faithful believers gave their support to the faithful believers among the Muhajirin, Ansar, and Bedouins, and those who disbelieve are allies of one another, and if you do not behave the same, there will be fitna and oppression on the earth, and a great mischief and corruption. Allah said next, unless you indeed fear a danger from them, meaning except those believers who in some areas of times fear for their safety from the disbelievers. In this case, such believers are allowed to show friendship to the disbelievers outwardly, but never inwardly. For instance, Al-Bukhari recorded that Abu ad darada said, We smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. Al-Bukhari said that Al-Hassan said the Tukra is allowed until the day of resurrection. So, because in the West, Muslims are extremely weak, and they'll go to jail if they practice Islam fully, they have to smile in their faces. But when we see in areas where they have the upper hand, 
Then they treat Christians how Muhammad treat was treating Christians, which is a humiliation, degradation. Treat them filthy. So don't ever let them fool you, as we see he's trying to do. From the very opening, he was trying to fool you, saying Islam is peaceful. But, 47 verse 35 of the Quran says, Do not cry for peace when you have the upper hand. That's the complete opposite of what Jesus taught. When your enemy comes to you thirsty and you have the upper hand, give him a cold drink. And in doing so, it will be like pouring hot coals. Love even your enemy, because when you were an enemy of God, God loved you. This is the true teachings of love from the one true living God, Jesus Christ, not this false satanic God who is called Allah. I think this debate has gone on long enough. The topic I'm going to talk about now is, can God be tempted, and is Jesus God? Okay, let's look at James chapter 1, verse 13. If you have your Bible, open up. Here we go. It says, and I quote, verse 13, For God is not subject to temptation to evil, and he himself tempts no one. So here we go, clear and cut, precise, and definitive. God is not tempted into evil. We're not talking about tempting God's patience or testing God's patience. We're talking about God. Can he be tempted into doing evil, sin, you know, wrongful deeds? And the answer here is clearly no. James says that in his letter. Now, was Jesus tempted? Whether he sinned or not. That's not the issue here. That's irrelevant to my discussion. I'm talking about temptation, not the actual sin itself. Was Jesus tempted? We just saw here in James that God cannot even be tempted, let alone sin. But Jesus was tempted according to Matthew chapter 4, verses 1. It says, quote, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Right, he was led by the Spirit, who we don't, do not believe is Gabriel, because we believe the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which, by the way, your God, Allah, was ignorant about and got it wrong in um, uh, 5 verse 73 of the Quran, saying that Mary is a part of the Trinity, showing that your God himself is not all-knowing. So, actually, um, in your disproving Jesus to be God, we can prove that Allah is not God, because he misunderstood the Trinity. So no wonder Muslims won't understand it if your own God was too stupid to get it. So the Spirit led him into the desert, not Satan. He didn't follow Satan here. So that means that Jesus is not God. Why? Clearly, because he was tempted by... The no, he was not tempted. When you read the story... Um, in Matthew, it will see you will see that 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 uh, and first of all, do you agree with this story? No, you don't, because it says asking Jesus if you are the Son of God, and he says if you are the Son of God, take these rocks and turn them into bread. And Jesus said, for it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. You shall not tempt me. I am your Lord. And he wasn't tempted by him. If he said, oh, maybe I should, and then changed his mind and he was tempted, then all right. But if, look, see, I can try and tempt Allah. I can say, okay, Allah, if you're really God, I want you to come down here and show me your leg. Because, of course, in 68 verse 42 of the Quran, Allah has a leg. Show me your beautiful leg, Allah, so that I might caress it, and give you a foot massage. I just tempted your God. Does that mean he's no longer God? You see how stupid you are? If you don't get tempted, it means you weren't tempted. There's a difference between somebody trying to tempt you and you being tempted by that temptation. Get the point? If my friend calls... If somebody calls me up, for sure they're not my friend, but if somebody called me up and said, Oh, James, come with me and let's go steal a car. And right away I say, no, for it is written, thou shalt not steal. And not even for a second I was tempted by him. Then it means I wasn't tempted. The devil. I mean, 
evidence he was tempted to do okay. evil things. That clearly shows to you and me that Jesus can never be God. Because God cannot be tempted, Jesus was tempted, therefore he cannot be God. Okay, stay tuned for part two, guys.